welcome to the Downtown Perspective. I'm your host, Adrian Nesbitt. Today, I'm joined by several of our downtown not-for-profits. We have Erin from Ryan's Place, Amber from the Goshen Theater, and Jen from The Window. Thank you all so much for joining me. So, um, one thing I think is really special downtown is obviously we have a lot of wonderful restaurants and, and shopping opportunities and services. We also happen to have a lot of really amazing nonprofits located right downtown. Um, so I wanted to invite a few of them to chat with me, especially as we're leading up to Giving Tuesday, which is such a great uh, annual holiday to think about our nonprofits and how to support them. So. Um, Aaron, I was wondering if you could go ahead and tell me a little bit about Ryan's Place. What's your mission statement? Who do you serve? What are you all about there? Sure. Thank you so much for having me as well. Um, Ryan's Place is a children's grief support center. Um, our vision is that we believe that no child or family should grieve alone. And our mission statement is to provide support in a safe environment where grieving children, teens, and their families uh, can share their experience as they move through the healing process. So we serve anyone that's grieving, um, ages three and up. We are in schools um, as we can be. A lot of that is virtual now. Um, and we also have a Monday evening um, grief support group as well. It meets bi-weekly. Yeah, wow. Um, Amber, can you tell us a little bit about the Goshen Theater? Obviously that's a huge community project. And um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know sort of where you're at on things and, and where things are heading. Yeah, uh, our mission uh, initially was to restore and revitalize the historic Goshen Theater, and we're always going to be continually in the process of restoration and uh, renovation to some degree, uh, but we're right at the end of our $5.2 million renovation project. As you can see, I'm in the beautiful renovated ballroom uh, with new lighting, new ceiling, new floors. So uh, we're all dressed up with nowhere to go because of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. So. Uh, yeah, in the future, we hope to be even more of a community arts hub and a place for uh, people in Goshen, Elkhart County and the surrounding areas to really enjoy the arts, film, uh, visual art, and also uh, be the home of a great educational program, the Goshen Theater Drama Club. Awesome. Jen, can you tell us uh, about The Window? You're, you're, you're maybe a more well-known nonprofit locally, but um, it's still important, I think, to let the community know specifically what you do and who you do it for. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Um, we, as a nonprofit, are a faith-based organization, um, and we provide um, services that meet the basic needs of um, anyone with a limited income. So homeless, um, underserved, low-income people, we provide basic needs. So we have a food pantry, we have a hot lunch program. Um, right now we're serving um, out, the back of our, out the back of our facility here. We have a clothing closet um, while we're open, when we have, an, um, when we're open to the public, we have also things like um, a shower and a laundry area and um, faxing services, phone services, mail services, those types of things, things that People might not have access to otherwise so that's basically what we do we take care of the basic needs of people um, in this community that that just need extra support yeah that's so awesome so I, I think all of you all of your organizations have been impacted in some way by this pandemic and the coronavirus um, Aaron, can you speak specifically to how that sort of had to shift your services or how that's maybe impacted some of your fundraising and and the work that you do Sure. Yes, in March, um, all of our schools that we were in and our program, it kind of came to a screeching halt. And so we um, pivoted and we went virtual. So that was successful. Families, of course, prefer um, to meet in person, especially when you're talking about grief and very personal, personal things. But we did make it work. Um, as far as we would have had our big gala, our March Madness gala, um, again in March, so that did not happen as well. So we <laughs> moved that virtual as well and went to May. Um, and it was online. Uh, we made it work, but it definitely we would have loved to be in person, so. Yeah, yeah, we all have to be a little flexible, but man, it's hard, yeah. Amber, you spoke a little bit about sort of some delays. Can you speak to anything else as far as um, just sort of what the Goshen Theater is, is going to need to wait for or do before they can really start um, opening back up? 
Yeah, well, being in the business of public events, this is a terrible time. <laughs> um, the thing that we want to provide the community is a place to gather and enjoy the arts and a place for artists to gather as well. And when there's no gathering, there's uh, like the mission still exists. So uh, some of the challenges that we have are like increased costs due to like cleaning needs. We've been trying to do some sort of private events where we can control the number of people in the building and, and things like that. But even like even those small gatherings at this point through the end of the year, it's not really going to be happening at the scale that we had hoped. Uh, so yeah, it's a huge impact on our business model where events are a large part of um, sort of that revenue stream that yeah. comes in for us. And it's also the principal part of our mission. So to have that mission and that revenue stream both be sort of dried up at this point, it's, uh, it creates challenges fiscally, but it also creates challenges kind of of the heart. You still wanna be relevant and you still wanna help the community. So how do you do that in light of being a gathering place? It's, uh, it's been a challenging year for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on that note, you know, as people in the community are looking for ways to support, you know, all of your nonprofits, um, I guess, especially through a Giving Tuesday initiative, how would you most recommend the community support you? So Erin, is there a way that the community can, can give extra support to your organization? Um, so if you go to our website, which is ryansplace.org, uh, there's a support button there. And you can make a donation. You can also put down whether you'd like that donation made in memory or in honor of someone. And then that will be listed on our website for a full year as well. Awesome. That sounds great. And Amber, how, how best could people support the Goshen Theater during this time? What, what are the theater's needs and how can the community get involved? Sure. Um, the simplest way really is similar. You go to goshentheater.com slash donate and there's a donation form there. Uh, and there's a number of ways uh, for people to donate or uh, intents if you have a per particular intention. We've also got uh, through the Community Foundation of Elkhart County an endowment. So if you wanted to donate to that endowment, you can look us up on the community Community Foundation of Elkhart County. And that goes towards long-term sustainability, not just today, not just 2020, but far into the future. Uh, so those are the two principal ways that you can do it. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's such a necessity for arts organizations because yes. there's, there's so much about the community, but they're not so much about making a profit. So we really have to support them and, and make sure that we continue to be an arts and cultural um, hive here in, in downtown Goshen. So super Absolutely. Important. Yeah. And Jen, what are your needs at the window? The window obviously um, has had a lot of impact from COVID. What are your big needs right now? What, what does the community need to do to support the window right now? Yeah, so um, we definitely felt a difference with COVID. We had to shut down the inside of our building. And so we actually started serving everything out our, out our doors. So at the front door, we're serving pantry. We make a box instead of um, people coming in and having a free choice they are given a box it is it does have a lot of food in it which is good but um, uh, it is it is not free choice currently um, so we do the food pantry out the front and then we do the hot lunch out the back um, and uh, we've just limited people coming in the only service that we provide where people are coming in are is the clothing closet um, but people when they come into the building they have to be wearing a mask um, and so we also had to discontinue some of those programs that are very important for um, especially our homeless friends, um, the, the um, shower and the laundry services. And we haven't been able to open that back up. We have seen um, an increase in people needing our services. Um, and um, so I guess the best way that people can help um, would be um, if you, there's a few ways um, you can donate food. Um, we are we are always in need of more food um, to give out to people. Uh, you can donate. Right now, we're taking clothing. Or sorry, not, not clothing. We are taking coats. <laughs> um, we have plenty of clothing right now. We are taking coats and blankets. Um, and then financially, if you'd like to donate, uh, you can go to the window of and um, click on how you can help, and then go down to the donate button. Um, another way to support us is to come come to our events. We have made our events drive through events or um, uh, our 5k we had a 
open start line um, so that people could come through um, socially distanced that way. So yeah, we have made some changes. Absolutely. Now, Jen, when you, when you speak about um, needing food donations, are there specific um, food yeah. items that are, are better to donate as well as like house home good items yeah. or other toiletry type things? Yeah, so we prefer um, shelf stable items. So things like canned goods and cereal and pasta, um, those type of things are really good. Also, <clears throat> yes, um, uh, toiletries, things like shampoo and conditioner, soap are all really good things to donate. Um, people really appreciate uh, toiletries as well. It's actually a very helpful thing. So, yeah. yeah. And can people just bring those by the window or do they need to call ahead and make an appointment or how does that work as far as actually bringing items to you? It's, it's probably best right now just because we are closed um, to, to the public to call ahead. That way you just make sure that you don't um, get out there and no one's there to take your donation. So it's probably best to call ahead. Well, I did want to know that uh, this year Ryan's Place is participating in our Love Goshen Holiday Scavenger Hunt. So um, they have a, a, a special kind of quirky uh, location. Um, so they're going to be one of those where you as a family, when you're doing the scavenger hunt, you're going to have to look for them. Um, but that'll also be great because then you know where they operate their services out of. So um, we recommend you pick up your scavenger hunt maps uh, at downtowngoshen.org. And those again are running now through Christmas Eve. Um, so something fun to get out with the family and walk around downtown and maybe discover some new businesses or nonprofits that are downtown that you didn't even know were there. So um, we continue to encourage everyone to shop local and to support local businesses, but we really encourage you to consider um, supporting one of our local nonprofits on Giving Tuesday and making sure that they can continue to serve our community. So um, thank you all so much for joining me and chatting with me today. Thank you. Thank you.